Bonjour et bienvenue sur ma chaîne. Je m'appelle Renaissance and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about the N-word. Where it came from, what does it mean, what's its history, who can say it. Spoiler alert, only black people. And what role does the N-word play in society today, in 2020? Not, like, my average duration, viewing duration on my videos is like three to five minutes, so I'm gonna try and put the most important things at the beginning of my videos, and I really like all my videos. I hope my video duration becomes longer over time because I put in work to my whole videos, but one thing that I really, really want to say at the top of the videos is that if you're not black and you're listening to a song by a black artist and they say the n-word, you um, can't say it. <laughs> That's still saying the n-word, still racist, still shouldn't do it, and um, yeah, uh, just really wanted to get that out there in case you're like, I've never said the n-word, and then like, I don't know, you listen to Outkast or Jay-Z or someone, I don't know, a lot of black artists say it, and you say the n-word, still racist, and still shouldn't do it. So, just want to get that, like, laid out there, because for some people think, some people think that that's like a loophole to the situation. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm black, I don't know what it's like to not be able to say the word. I wasn't allowed to say it growing up because my parents didn't like it. It's also like a really bad word, like I wasn't really allowed to cuss as a kid. And then, you know, growing up, it, like, I don't, like, anyways, like, I don't say it, but like, still, just like, if you're not black, like, I don't know what it's like to not be allowed to say it, um, but also as someone who is not conditioned to say it, it's never crossed my mind, like, I don't have this, like, deep yearning to be able to say the n-word, like, when I was a kid or I wasn't allowed to say it, like, I was like... The fireworks are starting! Thank you! We're just gonna get into it. Contact between Europe and Africa did not start with the slave trade or imperialism or colonialism. So, yes, white people and black people have known of each other for a long time. But when imperialism and colonialism started and slavery started, that is when things started to get very icky. And by icky, I mean crimes against humanity. When colonialism started, you had Europeans who were meeting Africans who, although having the exact same body parts, were completely thrown off by different feature ratios and skin color. And as they were enslaving and kidnapping these people and committing atrocities, thought that they needed a name to refer to these people. And so the N-word, as we know it, comes from the word for black um, that was used in uh, Spanish and in Italian. I don't know exactly how it's pronounced in Italian, but um, negro. Negro is black in Spanish. Like, it's not a secret. <laughs> um, and yeah, so they would call them black people, negro. Um, and where the n-word comes in is, is it was turned into a slur by British and Irish people who would take this term and created the n-word. That's where we have the modern n-word with its spelling that we know it as today in English. Uh, French also has a version of the n-word and its word for black. The word for black in French is noir, so if I want to say I'm a black person, I'd say je suis noir. And then they also have another word that is the n-word in Spanish, I mean in French. And Spanish also has the word um, negro for black, and then they also have the n-word in Spanish. I don't say the n-word personally, it makes me uncomfortable, it doesn't make me feel good, but if you're black, you can say it. 
Everyone knows what I'm talking about when I say n-word, so I don't feel the need to specify any further. And if you don't know what the n-word is and you're watching this video, I hope you learned something and this stops you from using it in the future, but, you know, look it up, don't look it up. I don't think it has a place in modern society, but we'll get into that. So you have these white people who are meeting Africans and they think that they have black skin, even though Africans and black people do not have black skin. We have brown skin and there are very, very deep, deep, dark brown people, but Again, commodifying someone by the color of their skin is inherently dehumanizing. And so that's another really important aspect of the word is that this word to describe people who looked different. I'm so sorry if the fireworks annoy you in the background. I'm just gonna get that out of the way. So anyways, these, this word that was used using the word black in these other languages wasn't used as a friendly description towards the Africans that they were enslaving and kidnapping and forcing into the slave trade and, you know, colonizing. It was a way to dehumanize them. They're not people, they're black and they're just blackness and it completely strips them of their humanity. And by calling them the N-word, what would what, what develop in the N-word uh, as the N-word, and specifically with the English and in the United States, it was used as a way to literally strip black people of humanity and of dignity and of the status of being worthy of a human. I mean, the Declaration of Independence was written that said all men are created equal while being slave owners, you know? Like, if you are recognizing that you yourself do not, do not deserve to be treated a certain way by the British imperialist state, yet you own people, you are stripping them of the status of human, of, of man, which we can go into the sexism of, um, which maybe we will one day, but, you know, let's, let's, let's stay focused here, people. You're stripping them of that humanity, and that history does not change, you know, over time. That, that's always going to be a part of the word, and when you're being enslaved, whipped, beaten, raped, while being called this word, it, it forces black people to internalize that this word is their identity, that they are less than human because they get called this word. Enslaved people were not given names and we're not given the ability to be unique and whole in their identity and we're never seen as individual people with lives and passions that that was never even presented as an option for them. You cannot be something that that you can't see, that you can imagine. And so if your entire life, the farthest, you know, the closest image, the only image that you have of yourself is this word that is used as a slur to beat you down and to, so, quote unquote, keep you in your place as an enslaved subhuman, as unworthy of the dignity of white people, that history doesn't go away. And whether you're saying it as a term of endearment or, or in a song lyric, and you are not black, you are bringing that history to the forefront and in that moment because it is never not used to not dehumanize black people. It is always racist and being ignorant of that history is not an excuse for why some people keep saying it. Although we learn about the history, no, we don't learn about the history of slavery, but although we know it exists, Rarely do we actually talk about the linguistic importance of history, and I think this is to a real detriment um, 
people don't want to talk about words, you know? We speak language and uh, we speak and we listen and we read, but we never take the time to invest in exactly what we're saying and exactly what we're learning about. We don't take time to actually learn about words and they are incredibly important. And the failure of the education system to actually teach explicitly about the N-word is part of why it, it's still an issue and the use of it is still an issue because no one knows what they're saying and black people aren't even taught exactly what they're saying. We know it's a slur, we know it's racist when non-black people say it. It can be, it is incredibly offensive, but if you don't even know what's hurting you, how can you defend yourself against it? And this continual dehumanization of black people through the use of the n-word is something that we're never going to be able to fully combat until we're able to talk about it head on and exactly the impact on society and that it has. I mean, this is a word that was used single-handedly to enslave black people for centuries was the use of this word and this constant dehumanization. of That's not a person, that's an n-word. Like, completely stripped of all humanity and yet non-black people still want to participate in that history every time that you are not a black person and you say that word you are adding yourself into the long string of white people and non-black people over centuries that use that word to strip black people of their humanity no matter what your excuse is and it's incredibly heartbreaking that is that that is a reality that I am constantly having to live with is people being okay non-black people being okay participating in conversations and lyrics and adding it to their vocabulary and laughing at tweets that have it in it because it's it, once the n-word is on the table if you're not black you're immediately excluded from the conversation and I don't think enough people grapple with this over the years um, you know, the N-word became out of style. It finally was seen as offensive. And then we, uh, there was this word. Um, and by the way, black people referring to themselves as the N-word is a completely different societal impact, which I will get to. But we are focusing on the racist aspect and black people saying the N-word cannot be racist because you can't suppress yourself. <laughs> um, but we have the term Negro all of a sudden and it's seen as for the time period the more politically correct way of referring to black people. I mean even Martin Luther King Jr. said Negroes and the Negro struggle and all of that. Let me tell you in 2020 if you call me a Negro uh, I will punch you. Um, I'm kidding. I won't because if there's um, any chance of a physical fight, I, I will lose. I am terrified of physical confrontation, but it, it is racist. I'm not going to lie. Don't be calling people Negroes. Um, don't be saying Negroes. Don't be quoting quotes. Don't be saying quotes that have the word Negroes in it. Um, just say black people. Just say black people. Because again, you are boiling down a whole group of people or a person that has a multitude of nuances and experience, like a full-fledged human being into one thing. And you're not even like the N-word and the word Negro. It doesn't even have people in it to add humanity. The reason why black people are black people is because we are people who are black. And the emphasis, the noun, the importance, the active part of that phrase is people. We are people. We are people that carry with us constantly black history. And we are black and we have that. But we are people first. And when you say the n-word or when you say negroes or blacks, okay, don't say blacks either because guess what? That's still just commodifying and putting a whole population and a whole group of people into one color, into one box that is the color of their skin. No person is just the box that is the color of their skin. That is ridiculous and incredibly offensive. I am a black woman. I'm a black woman first. That is the first and foremost 
present part of my identity that is the center of everything that I do. But to say that I am just black is to strip me of all of my humanity and all of my intersectionality. I do not have to be dehumanized more than once to finally be fed up in a situation. If you've never had the experience of being dehumanized and commodified to your very face, I absolutely have no patience in hearing your argument as to why I should give people a chance after saying the n-word, after saying negroes, after saying blacks. No. You say black people, you were, or you just refer to them as people, arm out, peace, bye, done, no thank you, no more. Like, so in terms of the history of black people reclaiming this word, when black people use the word n-word, or use the word n-word, when black people use the n-word or say negroes or whatever, a black person using that word cannot be used to strip them of nuance and humanity because they are aware of the nuance and humanity of black people because they live that. Being societally protected and then using a sword to stab someone is incredibly different than being the victim of that stab, taking that sword, and protecting yourself with it. And that is exactly what the reclamation of the n-word is. And using it casually, flippantly, flipping a term that was used on, on such terrible atrocities on your own people and taking that back and using it as a community term, as a term of endearment, as a show of, of friendliness and, and f friendship and, and likeness with people is incredibly revolutionary. But when non-black people want to participate in that, they're, they're not, they do not have a seat at the table, they're not a part of the pre- they're not a part of the conversation. Non-black people who use the n-word or use terms that have been used to commodify and reduce black people do not lay on the side of history that is reclamation. They're participating in the string of the dehumanization of people. I have no forgiveness for people who use the n-word. Every time a non-black person says the n-word, they're thrusting that history of oppression and dehumanization back into 2020. And they're continuing that every single time. You are never exempt from bringing that history into that moment if you're not black and you say that word. If you're black and you say that word, you are participating in revolution, in linguistic revolution. That is gorgeous, that is beautiful. I'm, I'm telling you right now, point blank, if you hear these words coming out of my mouth and you're not black and you say the n-word, you can't say that you don't hate black people because why would you bring the tragic history of a word that dehumanized them to a point of like animalization into 2020 for a community that you supposedly don't hate. How is that not an act of hate? Like genuinely, knowing this, knowing this about this word, how could you then still make the claim that that's not racist and that you don't hate black people? Anyways, 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 say you disagree with everything that I've said, even though I'm not the first and only black person to say this, I can tell you that like this, this has been said for a while now. Even if I and maybe a handful of other real staunchy black people were just like, we don't like the n-word, which again, not the case. Like I said in my last video, why would I protect the already comfortable over the uncomfortable? But you know that every time you say the n-word, there's a chance of deeply, deeply, deeply offending someone wouldn't you just not say it 
You know, like, like, why take that chance? Why take that chance of being called a vile racist, which is what you are if you say the n-word, when you could just not say it and just participate in the other racism that already exists? Why add this to your racist resume? You know? You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I don't, I don't get it. This is not a complicated video, like I'm not gonna fucking bring up artifacts and like quotes of accredited historians and bullshit because like really it should not take that much to convince you to not say the n-word. Like if you're watching this and you're like, hmm, like I get what she's saying but like, like she didn't well, a white man or professor, so like, she must be lying. Like, the N-word must not be that bad. Girl, bye. Like, please. Like, please. Like, what's your issue? What is your issue? You know? Like, I should not have to be sobbing and, and bringing up my generational trauma and talking about, like, my enslaved ancestors for you to understand that you shouldn't say the N-word. Right? Right? Like, maybe, maybe this is it. Like, maybe this casual conversation, like, maybe me just being like, and don't say it, is like what people needed to hear. If you're quoting a black friend who said, like, oh my, went to the mall. I don't know, that's not, that's such a terrible sentence. But like, I, I literally could not think of anything else. Just say, friends. You know what they're saying, buddies pals, acquaintances. If, if you're if you're quoting something from the 60s and it says like Negro population, a uh, black population, number of black people living in this state, number of black people, blah 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 blah. There, don't have to say Negro. Um, if you're reading something from the 80s that said blacks thought this way, you like if you're a conscious speaker, you can self-correct and say black people. Have you ever listened to your favorite song or a song that has a bad word in front of your parents and like you don't curse in front of your parents and so like even though you always say every fuck shit bitch in the song when you're listening to it on your own and then all of a sudden you're a fucking Jedi when your parents are in the room? then, like, why is it so hard for you to not say the n-word in a song lyric if you can, like, switch it? Like, it doesn't show that you don't know the lyrics. Like, if you miss one word and that one word happens to be the n-word, I'm not gonna be like, oh, you don't, you don't know all the lyrics. Like, please. Like, if you're a non-black person and you have black friends and you said the n-word around them, uh whether they're okay with it or not and some black people for some reason have this notion that there's this thing as like a n-word pass and they just let their friends say the n-word which is an interesting dynamic one that i can't relate to so i'm not going to speak on that but whether they realize it or not it has affected them and internalizing the notion as a black person that it's okay for non-black people to call you the n-word is a form of internalized white supremacy and this degradation of the self that can be done completely subconsciously and some may not even like that I'm saying this and that's fine like that's a valid experience but even if you're non-black it costs you nothing and it hurts no one to not say it. And that's really what I think the point is, is that, you know, black people don't have to bring up their trauma to try and convince people to not be racist. But I think the biggest point is that you could just not be without us having to bring up the trauma that comes with that word. And um, I think another important piece is that you might be saying this and you might be like, you know, fuck all of that, I'm a racist, I'm still gonna say the n-word. Okay, 
You, you might say freedom of speech. I can say any word that I want. Black lady, you can't tell me what to say. And I'd be like, you're right. I can't tell you what to say. I can tell you, you know, what it means. I can't physically stop or make anyone do anything. But let me tell you, if you're not black and you say the N-word, and you say it under freedom of speech, yes, you have freedom of speech to say it, that does not exempt you from the consequences of saying it. So if you get fired, if things become uh, revoked, you know, privileges become revoked, you get denied from your school or scholarships or lose opportunities for saying the n-word and for being an active racist, that is a price of freedom of speech. You are not exempt from consequence, which I think is really important. So you can't get arrested for saying the n-word. Of course, you can get arrested for hate speech, so there is that. Again, freedom of speech is not freedom from consequence. So if you watch all of this, hear all of this, and don't care, don't expect to not get clocked, called out, dragged, whatever for saying the n-word. Because if you want to have freedom of speech, you have to deal with the consequences for your speech. So that's one thing that I really want to say. I hope you guys maybe learned something from this video. Maybe you already didn't say the n-word, but you didn't know exactly what it meant and why you shouldn't say it. And maybe hopefully this has made some things clear for you. Either way, share it with someone who you think might say the n-word and you want to tell them in a way that's not direct that you are not okay with that and I'll gladly tell anyone that they need to stop saying the n-word. So there's that. Uh, look at this. Two videos two weeks in a row. Will I have a third video in a week? Who knows? Will that finally be another French video? Will it be a different linguistics video about words and the importance of words? Which I love talking about. Will it be a pro-black video? I don't even know. I'm on the edge of my seat waiting to find out. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like, a little comment, a little commie comments, commie, communist comments. Anyway, um, uh, subscribe, like, comment, whatever people ask for, and have a nice day, evening, morning, whenever you're watching this. Okay, bisous, ciao.